over a decade ago when i started coding my first program people were talking about relational databases where we can store our data and retrieve it whenever we require in a relational format basically a table structure format later on as time passed on people started talking about no sql databases where you can store json messages in a flat file system and you don't have to store it in a specific schema type or something now people are talking about graph databases and time series databases we saw about time series database few months ago in this particular video we are going to see what is a graph database where can we use it and i'll show you a simple example of how you can use or when to use graph databases press the bell icon on the youtube app and never miss any update from tech primers so the agenda for this particular session is going to be what is a graph database when do we need it and how is it different from a traditional database and how we can store the data in the database we will see that with an example as well so what are graph databases according to wikipedia graph databases are nothing but a type of database where you can store data in the form of nodes as the name suggests it is using a graph where we use nodes and there are edges which connect these nodes and there are some properties which represent this particular edges or nodes which are stored inside the database the major concept of the graph database is its relationship with which it is all linked together these relationships are useful when we want to store this data inside the database and we can directly link them when we store them and it is useful in lots of operations and we are going to see that in the future slides so at a high level graph database is a database but you can store relationship with nodes you will be storing a particular key set or a data set as a node and there will be relationship between these nodes and you can retrieve them however you want it or you can place them however you want it so a typical example of um, a graph database could be a social networking site which has different friends so let's say in facebook i have 100 friends those 100 friends will have their own friends so all these will be linked together because i might have some mutual friends so at a high level these profiles can be linked or can be stitched together in terms of relationship called friends right so same way you can have different pages which we like we follow you can have a nested graph with which we can identify a particular person and his relationships within the social network so when do we need this particular graph database right so as i suggested that is an example but how is it really helpful right so it is helpful in solving many to many relationship problems like the example which i mentioned earlier when we have Uh, friends of friends and stuff like that these are many to many relationships right it's not like a single one to one relationship or something like that so it is useful relatively when you have lots of relationships and when the query in the relational databases are very complex and they are not e efficient then you can go for graph databases where you can efficiently query many to many relationships in a much faster fashion the next one would be the relationship between these data elements which are the primary or the first class citizens than the entity itself so for example as i said right there are there is a profile and the profile has some specific information in it but the major selling point is the relationship between these different profiles that is how you get connected within a network right so same way if there is a data element let's say there is a user data element inside a graph database there could be multiple user data elements but the relationship is what is going to be the driving factor for all these data elements which are stored inside the graph database the last one obviously is the low latency with the large scale data when you are adding lots of relationships in a relational database the data sets are going to be huge and when you query it the complexity is going to be more and the relational joins and the queries which we had been using in the relational database are going to be like more complex and it is going to take more time than usual however in a graph database it is specifically designed for this particular purpose and you can query relationship with ease so let's see how is it different from a 
traditional database right so in order to explain that i'll use an example of um, imdb let's say there are different user profiles and there are different movies and people rate movies so let's consider these are the different five movies which are present in our database lord of the rings the dark knight inception avengers and iron man and there are four users peter sam ryan and adam and these particular users are going to rate movies which are present inside the website right and i want to store the relationship between the user and the movies so how did they rate them so how will i generally store it right so for example imagine that users are in the center and these are surrounded by the movies now peter will rate lord of the rings as let's say three star sam might be giving two star ryan might be giving another two and adam might be giving three star so if you store this in a relational database we will be having a row or something right saying peter uh, the value of um, a column says which is a user which will be peter and the value of the column which says rating which will be three and the movie the, the value of the column movie will be like lord of the rings so you will have like let's say four rows in this particular case right now imagine the other case peter is going to do the same for dark knight as well so you will be having multiple rows and if you notice there will be duplication of the user peter and there will be different movies with different rating right however imagine a graph database so if there is more complex operation so when when there were single rows it was all fine but however when there are more users and more movies the complexity adds in right if you see here now it is a more complicated relationship which we have created and there will be lots of rows inside the database and when you want to query for example when you want to query what ratings peter has given for different movies then it is very difficult you will be getting like what uh, five rows right when you say uh, select star from movie ratings where user equal to peter then you will be having five rows right and you will have to figure out from that five rows however in a graph database you can query directly by the relationships so you can directly say i want the user peter and the corresponding ratings which he has given for a movie so you will be getting it in a json format or something similar where you will be having all the relationships tied already and it will be faster compared to a traditional database where it is going to be more complicated a graph database is going to return you in a much faster fashion because it is designed for that particular purpose and it will be stored like this like how we can see it right now this is how it will be stored as well so it will be stored in a nested structure where there will be relationships so for example this relationship is nothing but the movie rating right peter rated lord of the rings with three star and the property three star is nothing but a property over that relationship right so what is the rating which peter has given the three star so you can have multiple properties for a relationship here it is just the rating number which we have given there are other use cases like how we saw for social networking we can use it for recommendation services or personalization for a particular user uh, you can also use it for like a customer 360 degree which includes entity rel relationships between different sources for that particular user or there are use cases where people use it for fraud detection or you can use it for resolving your authentication and authorization problem where you have a single user who has different roles and responsibilities and you want to map that and you want to relate different users with different user you can use relationships and the graph database concept in the in that particular case i hope you guys understood um, what we discussed so i'll just summarize what is a graph database so graph database is a database where you will be storing data in the form of graphs and these data are called as nodes and you will be having a relationship between these nodes so that you can easily query them and you can query based on relationships and the properties on that relationships why do we need it or when do we need it we require these kind of data when we have many to many relationships or you want to have a low latency system which is processing at a large scale and also you want to get a holistic view of the relationships which are present inside the system and finally how is it different from the other databases since these data are stored in the form of relationships you can easily query them and the complexity is less when you are storing it in the form of relationships and its properties it's easier for you to retrieve them faster and you want it that way because you want to process them as a relationship with a nested structure i hope you guys understood what is a graph database 
in the future videos we will see how we can use a particular implementation of a graph database for example if you go to wikipedia you can see different graph database implementations like uh, arangodb is a new um, multi-module database you will see that in the future videos uh, similar to that we have a neo4j um, which is a popular graph database there are there is a teradata aster there are lots of um, other graph databases as well so in the future videos we will be seeing what is arangodb what is neo4j and we will also see examples of a spring boot application using that i hope you guys understood what is the basics of a graph database as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much Oh